For the month of June, we did another monthly animation challenge, of course, uh, called the Amateur Astronaut. There were some fun submissions. We're going to take a look at those. And there's also a cool animation that we're going to that I'm going to critique in depth uh, for about 20 minutes or so. And you're going to learn a lot about how to, uh, you know, make your animations better, more appealing, more entertaining, and how you can be better so that you can work in movies or games. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Right, I randomly picked uh, Jeremy's animation here of the amateur astronaut. Let's let's take a look again uh, one more time at the animation. <laughs> so, you know, I I like this animation. I like that the jetpack uh, is something that the astronaut has and it malfunctions. I love the idea of that. I like her hang time there and the ridiculousness of the way that she falls. And I think you're pretty good at, at showing her panic and taking that time uh, in that moment as she comes forward uh, to show you know, the, the, her emotional state. Um, so I think, I think this is fun. I think this is a good exercise for you. And, uh, and I think it's fairly successful. I, I'd love to see you know, at, at some point if you kept going with a shot and really finished it all the way and took it all out of step and got it all right. But, um, you know, if you're moving on to another shot, that's fine too. So I want to talk about, um, there's a lot we can do to make this better. I want to talk first about body mechanics, and then I want to talk about acting and story and your character, um, and what we can do to amp this all up to a higher level. So here in the beginning, I just want to talk about this section first. So when she comes in, she feels pretty floaty to me. And a lot of that has to do with spacing. If we go to that bouncing ball, um, right now, you have more of this like even spacing. You know, it's like every distance is even uh, for each key of that hip coming down, like all through there. It feels very floaty because of that. So a bouncing ball, you know, would have that tighter spacing, obviously. So you'd have these closer together and then they start to spread a bit and pick up, it gives that feeling of picking up speed on the way down, right? And then you got a couple frames here. Um, the other thing you remember about the bouncing ball is that if you're coming down for that, that impact, you don't spend a ton of time there. You bounce right back up usually, unless most of the energy is gone or unless you're so heavy that you're just like stuck down here. Right, but you have her come back up. It just seems like it takes a while for that hip to leave that ground. So a combination of those things makes it feel floaty. The other part of this that's strange is her spine, her whole body is very stiff. So it holds that shape through here without changing. And you want to introduce more flexibility than that. So. seems like this is her high point so maybe the spine is like like this here and then as it comes down you'd want to drag back and then sometime after the hips have landed the spine would curl back in you know you're gonna fix that spacing of that ball bounce there those hips right so if I'm changing the drawing here. So you get this shape into that, right? That adds a lot more flexibility there into that body, makes her feel more organic. And then she's, she makes, uh, you know, a, she has a lot of momentum going this direction. She's, you know, she feels like she's like, she's like, 
her her rocket has has shot her in and she's kind of skidding to a stop. That's what it feels like. Um, but this slowdown right here, this hip is not going forward, is killing all that. And it really stands out because after that slowdown, suddenly she picks up speed here again, right? You'd wanna slow into this position here. So if this is your curve, this is this is this key, right, at the top. And you're coming from here. You'd want to launch, rocket launch, and then you're slowing down, slowing down, slowing down into this position, right? So there's this always this gradual slowdown towards the end of easing in. So you don't want that slowdown right here in the middle and then a speed up and then a slowdown. You want that speed slow, 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 stop. Right, that will really help you. And it's it's um, also feeling weird balance-wise. I think her weight could probably be more on this back foot, and this leg is locked out right now, which might be because you know your early spline here, and you didn't have time to clean all that stuff up. Um, so in that case, it might have been better to leave it in stepped. Um, but anyway, it's all good practice. And then as far as this step back goes, she's out of balance because she's very centered on both legs. Um, and you're picking up that foot. See how the weight starts to go now as the foot is picking up. You want the weight, you want her hips to be over this leg already before you pick up this foot and step back. And in that respect, you could probably have the weight come over and go down to step up and drop down on that foot. Just like you, you drop down on that foot um, here, which works fine. Something that will help you with that is delaying that foot pickup. So this foot just arrives. It's only there for like a frame and you've already started moving the other one. Let this foot arrive and sit there a minute. Give it, give it a second to plant. So give it, you know, two, two to three frames before you pick up the other foot. Okay. Now let's move forward here. So she's checking her watch or checking the radar, space radar. It's very like Buzz Lightyear. Hello, Star Command. Um, it's fun stuff. Um, I, at least, you know, that's what I think of when I look at it. Um, I love the jetpack wiggling and she goes to look at it. Uh, the head turn for me, we'll talk, we'll talk about this again in the acting, but the head turn for me, uh, is very isolated. I would also rotate the body to make it feel like the body's more connected. If you turn your head a lot, you gotta turn your neck, you gotta turn your chest to go in that direction. So that would really help to... Um, to make her feel organic there. The other part of this is I don't feel the intensity, the panic that she thinks that there's a problem happening. I feel like she's like, is there someone back there somewhere, somewhere? Or is she like, oh, where, what's happening with my jetpack? You know, the this kind of gets into the acting, but this is why body mechanics is so important to have before you do too much acting. To sell that shock, we need to know how to move the body uh, intensely to sell the shock. So, like, if she's shocked about the jetpack starting, she might be like, down up, like, take, you know, oh, my jetpack's going off or something, instead of, what's happening with my jetpack? You know, something along those lines is what we have right now. Um, <clears throat> and then... So the jetpack goes off, I'm assuming. It would be helpful to see some flame. Maybe you're planning, you were planning on doing that later. You could have just had like a, like a cone or something and turn the invisibility on and off once in a while. Um, so the jetpack goes on, she goes launch forward. We, we feel the physics of this and we feel the slide and stop. Um, what's strange about it is that the jetpack is tilted this way 
and I'm imagining the flame would be this direction. So if that's happening, the force is going that way and her body would be pulled by the jetpack, right? So the jetpack goes this way, her body would drag behind, right? But that's not what you wanna do. You wanna go this direction. So we have to invent a way to have the jetpack force her this way. So if we had it turned, turn the flame on this way and then she's coming towards the camera now. And in this case, her spine would be dragging back from where it used to be, trying to catch up to the force of this, where this jetpack is taking her, right? So that head would be, you know, dragging back from that position and so would her arms, right? So that's what you wanna to do to make this more believable. And if that's the case, we would also take this arm and kind of keep that in the same place until she her her hips have really taken off somewhere. So here you wouldn't even have this shape. You wouldn't have that arm fling out. It feels this movement feels like she got hit in the face in that direction or the rocket launched this way um, when it's back here, right? Hope that makes sense. Um, so she's. She hasn't really moved too much yet. You don't even need this pose. You can kind of keep her where she used to be. So she's gonna have, let's let's say she started in this position and then she'll drag a little bit as her she starts to take off and then she'll drag a lot. And then at some point her body is gonna catch up when, when she slows down into that drag, right? when she slows down in this skidding moment here. That's what I'm just talking about what the spine is doing shape-wise. We can drag a lot through there. Cool. Hope that makes sense. That's, this, uh, there's a lot of insights there on how to take the, the physics of and, and force of things and how to apply it to the body so that it feels real. Uh, definitely want the hands also to be broken up from the body movement. You probably want the spine to go first and then the hands will drag behind that. And right now, they all go moving at the same time. Okay. From here, as it's coming to the skidding stop, what stands out to me is the shape that you're getting in the body. This part feels especially here broken and then chest kind of feels like this and then her necks like that you want to clean shapes up like like that and uh one way to do it is you're probably going to solve it just by doing what i talked about here with the spine um because what you'll do is you'll take this and then you'll just create some kind of simple C shape dragging that that head behind right so that you can go right into this and I you're, you're doing the right thing here it's great to see the face it's great to see the jetpack it'd be just uh, nice to see a little bit more of the side of the character here minor Um, and then this action needs to be broken up a little bit more. So again, we're moving the hands with the body, the spine's coming up, right? You're going from this to that, and the hands are, let me use a different color for them. And the hands are, coming up at the same time. You see that? Well, what you could do is just leave them behind. So let me ghost that real quick. Tone down how many frames I'm using here. Uh, so we keep those hands back. 
let them stretch as the spine takes off, right? And then somewhere around here, you know, you can start to do what you're already doing. And then you might want to have one that's, you need a few more frames to cushion into this position for these guys. Let those hands come down. And the other thing you want to do is the hands obviously should follow the body, right? So they're delayed. That's why we're letting them uh, stretch here in this moment. The spine's going up, the hands kind of stay put, right, for a frame. And the other thing you want to do is change it so that one of these hands is faster than the other. So this one might be one to one to two frames faster than this one. Um, and that what that does is it takes your hands from doing like this kind of thing to you know feeling a lot more organic, even though they're technically doing the same thing. Now here, because the character is moving so much. I don't really notice the jetpack bouncing around a lot. The other thing that's hurting you is the camera framing is cutting it off. So I actually, when I watched this, I didn't notice that the, the jetpack was malfunctioning there, which is an important story problem to fix. So, <clears throat> so we definitely gotta let the character get a little still and we gotta have more camera space for you to move that jetpack around and show that it's malfunctioning. The other thing that would help you is silhouette. So we could have the jetpack showing more here to the side. And then, you know, we can see the flame come on and then it shoots her up into the air, right? Camera wise, I know that you're in stepped. Um, what you wanna do though, with any situation like this, most of the time is let the camera let the cam follow the character. It's almost like the character is going to take off and then the camera is going to try to catch up and it's just going to barely keep the character in frame. So your character will be pushing the edge here, you know, um, to keep the intensity high and to show that the camera is following the character. Um, so we shouldn't have you know, later on we shouldn't have like all this frame of dead space. We'll always be watching her go up into the air. She goes up into the air, this is cool. And there's this, uh, I love the hang time. I like that she's not static. She's got this like flailing bit going on with her spine and her hands. Uh, what you wanna do though, this is kind of what we talked about already with that spine drag. So in a moment like this, where she's really starting to accelerate towards the ground, you notice how her spine stays straight through all that, right? So from here, you know, in a situation like this, I would expect that this is probably dragging behind to show that she's not made out of marble. and show that there's some really some acceleration there on her that might give you something like this and again with the camera we got to stay with the character just enough we want to keep her in frame so that we can see that impact and right now we completely miss the hit so it takes away from that entertainment of that whack that boom and then skid right um and it's also unclear you have all this hang time right now but it's unclear whether the jetpack is off or it's still on if it's still on i would expect that the, uh, the reason why she comes down is that the jetpack has started to point her down right to really push her in that direction or we just see it more to the side and we can see that the flame is no longer on as she gets shot up and then it's click, you know, hits the ground. I don't know if that made any sense. Um, but it's like, we will we'll use this hang time to show that jet turn off, right? So she comes down, hits, 
comes to a stop and so I can really feel her slow down there and then that's cool what's weird is that she goes backwards here in this frame so you want to keep her going forwards this is where she was this is where she, she just keeps going forward a little bit on this frame and then same deal here you want that to just settle forwards right this is her direction she's slowing in she has speed here before and then she slows down spacing wise pose wise um, this is kind of funny um, I would like to see more of the side of the character so we can really see like what's going on with her, like how much pain she's in with her body or the way that she landed um, something along those lines the other thing that's helpful is again to see that jetpack probably tilted to the side so it looks like it you know things are even more a mess because the jetpack isn't on straight we can also know if the jetpack is off or on still so that's really key to help us story wise and speaking of story let's let's talk more about that now um, so all these changes will really help you with the story um, I want to go back to the beginning real quick. So she comes in with this attitude of it feels it feels a little bit clumsy because she comes in like it's like like she's skidding to a stop. She's not quite got control of things. It's a little bit clumsy. Um, and then and then the rocket malfunctions and she gets really clumsy and terrified. Right, and that's the way it stays all the way until the end where she gets knocked out, I guess. Um, why not do the opposite? Why not have her be, instead of clumsy in the beginning, she's very slick, she's very confident, she's a pro, she does this all the time. Uh, why not have that attitude from the beginning? In which case, maybe you don't have to a stop, which, also takes you, you know, it's it's like 80 frames of animating just to add that in there. So if you want to ask yourself, is that really necessary? Do you want to do that? Or could, if she's really confident, couldn't she just with her jetpack or like she really sticks the landing, you know, it's like very Gwen Stacy from Spider-Verse uh, versus that kind of thing um, and this would you know maybe take you like I don't know 12 frames or less to have her shoot in with the rocket pack and hit the hit the landing and hit this pose um, and it, it, it helps you more story-wise because it's the opposite emotion of what happens after the fact so she's very confident here um, and we can take this pose even we take this pose even and we can show that confidence so it's like she's very slick and she's a pro she does this all the time she's like star command checking her radar you know it's very precise move and her body language would be like chest up you know it's very wonder woman very super heroine so you would take the chest and bring the chest up and you could i guess you know, do like an S pose, or you can just go straight back, you know, to show that she's very confident, she knows what she's doing. And you'd also wanna bring her arm up to check the radar or the timer or whatever it is, um, in a manner that's very confident, very snappy, you know, not like super slow and casual, cause then maybe she's sleepy. Or if she's like, you know, uh, she could be drunk if she does it another way. So you really want to think about how she moves um, to sell the emotion. And that's why that's why you have to learn body mechanics and really practice that before you get too worried about acting because it's difficult to sell the acting if the character doesn't move uh, in a way that sells that emotion. Um, half, of it, half of it's the pose, half of it's the way that you get into the pose. 
So we have that confident posture now. Now we get to see her really go from this very overconfident astronaut into, oh no, I don't know what I'm doing, which to me adds a lot more humor to your shot. Uh, that, that character progression, you know, we really feel the intensity a lot more that way. Um, through here, Again, I already talked about the jetpack's importance on the story. You know, if the jetpack is on, we'd want to see it like burning her, like squashing, not burning her, but like uh, pushing her into the ground if it's still on. And if it's off, then she just gets planted there. Uh, you could also like put her head through the ground. You know, if we could see more of the side of her face, the side of her side of the character, we could see like her helmet's like stuck in the ground and she's, you know, just buried there. Um, but you wanna ask yourself, is this really the funniest thing that I can do? Is this a great ending right now? She basically, she's confident, she loses control and then face plants and she's knocked out. But, you know, if you think about the Looney Tunes, um, Wile E. Coyote, when he fails, he doesn't just fail and like he doesn't get the Roadrunner. He fails and he gets blown up by the dynamite. The 3,000 ton boulder crushes his head or he falls 5,000 feet and, and then, you know, and then things happen or he just, you know, um, some other, some other, uh, some other explosion happens. Um, it's the crazy exaggeration that takes it up a notch and makes it really, really funny as opposed to just doing a poof, slapstick, the character's knocked out. Um, when I first saw this, what I thought was why not have, we've, we've got this jetpack, we've got it malfunctioning, why not have the earth or something here? And she's on the moon and there's low gravity. And so the jetpack shot her up into the air, turned off, she lands, and then here, because it's still in view, it kicks back on. We see the flame turn back on, and then she's um, So basically it turns back on, and then it can launch her back into outer space because the gravity is low on the moon, and she can be headed towards Earth, and you can have the Wily e. Coyote thing where it's like You know, and she turns into like a little speck because she's going so far away. And you can have all kinds of fun, you know, with like how the jetpack turns back on and then launches her in this direction, right? Um, so it could just be like, uh, it could be, so it's like side to side and then launch into the air, or it could be like, and then shoots her up uh, into the air. Uh, you could also have like a spinning and then launches high into the air and you can get her like facing back towards camera. No. I don't want to go to the earth. So you can have like, I know that's a beautiful drawing. You can have that kind of like dragging behind like the jetpack's taking her and she can't really help it. You know, jetpack could be Something like this. So I think that would be really hilarious. And then you just get this, this like her launching back and she turns into a speck. And then you've effectively made an awesome femoral shot if you were able to pack in all those mechanics in there to sell the acting, to sell the forces. Um, and, and then you implemented some of these story ideas. I think you would have a, a fantastic demoral shot. But if you're sick of it, yeah, or if you want to just go back and face it, you know, six months down the road and then make that Timberreal shot when your body mechanics are better or something like that, do it. Uh, if you want to move on, go for it. Just whatever you do, keep up the practice because you're getting better every month. And I believe you're doing the new Ninja Challenge here, Jeremy. So I can't wait to see how that develops. And I can't wait to see everyone else's animations as well. Um, these same tips can apply to you and your animations on how to make them better and how, how you can get better so that you can reach uh, you know, your dream studio and work on those dream movies and games and stuff. All right, hope you really enjoyed that. Later. I really hope that you enjoyed that critique and you learned a lot from it. 
Um, if you've taken part in these monthly animation challenges, I look forward to seeing more of your work. I hope you keep it up, uh, and I, I can't wait to see how the progress shows from month to month as we keep doing these. Um, and if you haven't taken part, uh, by all means, you're welcome to join the Facebook group for free. Just check the description below on how uh, you know you can take part in the next one. And who knows, maybe I'll be showcasing your, your animation uh, next month and I'll be doing an in-depth critique on your stuff on how you can become a better animator. So until then, I hope you have a great time animating and uh, I look forward to hopefully seeing you soon.